Hello and welcome to another in the series Legends of West Indies Cricket on Cricket 360 Friday Night Line. Let's take a look at Ian Bishop in this series. Ian Bishop, we can be, say, has been blessed with a life in cricket. No West Indies cricketer from the region has maintained a visible presence in the world's cricket stage as Ian Raphael Bishop has for all of his adult life thus far. Others have rejoined after breaks following their playing days, but his has been a non-stop journey in the cricketing world, evolving from West Indies fast bowling star to noted cricket commentator. In essence, his has been a life dedicated to cricket. His 161 test wickets at an average of 24.27 and 118 one-day international wickets at 26.50 tell the story of what might have been had it not been for the premature end to his promising international career at the relatively tender age of just 30. From his long run-up and orthodox side-on action, his was a beautiful action as he bounded in to deliver his express missiles at many a hapless batsman. However, stress fractures of the vertebrae in 1991 meant that he had to overgo intensive rehabilitation, modify his action, and become more front-on in his delivery without loss of his lethal away swing. Two, year, two years later, he took 6 for 40 on a rapid Perth pitch to prove he had lost little of his effectiveness. However, the following year he broke down again and was absent from the test side for another two years until his comeback against England in 1995. Such was his determination. This time though, he had lost his potency and played his last test also against England in March 1998. No rabbit with the bat, the right-hander slammed 111 for Trinidad and Tobago against Barbados in 1997. He played locally at the club level for Crompton and Prisal and for Derbyshire in the English League. And when his playing days ended, as manager and coach of Trinidad and Tobago national team, and as a member of the West Indies Cricket Board, Cricket Committee, on his path to becoming one of the world's most sought after and recognized cricket commentators today. In 2000, he was awarded the Trinidad and Tobago Shaconia Medal Silver. And prior to that, the Sportsman of the Year Awards in 1989 and 1990. Today, he continues to enjoy his career as a successful globe-trotting television commentator and has become well-known for his eloquent and thoughtful analysis, his interviews and his post-game raps, and as master of ceremonies for after-game presentations. Had it not been for the career-ending back injury, by the age of 26, he had twice brought to stop a stop to a most promising fast bowling career. His tally of just 43 tests from 1989 to 1998 and 84 ODI matches from 1988 to 1997 for the West Indies would have been a lot more as he was on his way to becoming one of the greatest fast bowlers the world would have ever seen. So let's, let's get into some question and answers that we posed to Ian Bishop. When and how did you get into cricket broadcasting? I suffered a stress fracture on my back early in 1991 season, prior to Australia's tour of the Caribbean, and I was out of the game for a number of months. I remember being asked during that time to do some radio commentary with Mr. Ken Ablack and Mr. Lance Murray, amongst others on the Australians game versus Trinidad and Tobago at Guayacara Park. 
After that, I was asked by the BBC Radio in 1993-94 to work on a test match at the Queen's Park Oval between England and the West Indies. Those were some of my early experiences. I had no intention of working in the media when I retired, but as life turns, after I, the said retirement, I did some radio with some local stations and then Canna, now CMC, as they offered me the opportunity to work on the home series in 1999-2000. Finally, in 2000, a friend of mine from the UK who was an agent acting for a couple of Western League players at the time was on a visit to Trinidad and asked me if I would be interested in working in the UK on the West Indies tour for Channel 4 television. I said yes, thinking nothing would come of it. So we did a taped audio demo and sent it to them. And that was the beginning. I have since found out that Michael Holding was asked by the producer of Channel 4 for a recommendation and was told that he recommended me. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Belmont in 1967 in Port of Spain and my parents moved us to St. Anne's when I was about a year old. I am reliably informed and St. Anne's is where I grew up. My link with Toko is only that my grandparents and uncles are largely from there and many still live there. We spent a lot of our holidays up there as youngsters. At what schools and in institutions did you receive your education? Belmont RC School and Belmont Secondary Intermediate and the University of Leicester. Leicester. I with a master's with an MA sorry in mass communications. What are a couple of your most memorable cricket performances? Hmm. Without doubt, it was the win against India in Barbados in 1997. India needed 120 to win and they could only manage 81. It was a great team performance and it came in a very tight situation. It was also Brian Lara's first match as stand-in captain. We planned well as a team about our approach the night before that final day and it all came together sweetly. When, where and against whom did you play your first test match and your first ODI for the West Indies. I played my first ODI against England at Headingley in 1988 and I was so nervous. I remember fielding at fine leg and a ball came scooting down about 20 yards away from me. I so wanted to impress Captain Viv Richards that I took a few steps and ran after it. About 15 yards from it, I dived after it and missed by about 10 yards. I clearly could not get anywhere close to it, even if I had taken a daily dose of steroids, but I tried anyway. When I looked up, everyone on the field was in laughter. <laughs> it is re recorded in television history somewhere. My first test was against India and Ghana in 1989, and I was a lot less nervous because I had played a lot of ODIs by then. Which cricket ground other than the Queen's Park Oval is the best you've ever played on in your West Indian career? I love Lords, cricket ground in England for its history and architecture, but Sabina, Sabina Park in Jamaica for atmosphere and Perth, Australia for its pitches are hard to beat. One over to go, Ben Stokes has got 18 runs to play with. Brathwaite is on strike. Yeah, I remember the name. Look, I've, I've heard that ever since that fateful day at Eden Gardens repeated to me. I don't like hearing it, I don't like hearing myself, but the memory for me is how well Carlos did. Mr Bishop, we've got three games left in this campaign and it's our duty you know, to make you remember the names. <laughs> Thank you very much, Susan. <laughs> remember the name! So, 
that's it for Ian Bishop. I hope you enjoy this brief segment and we will take a look at, I believe, uh, Chandrapal in the next installment. As mentioned before, 33 legends we're doing in alphabetical order. In alphabetical order, sorry. So, thank you and do